great idea for a film. The musical sequence in the hit film 2 trailer features abstract particles that react to their surroundings, either drawn to light or generated by the motion of the musicians. I'm Simon Jones from hitfilm.com and in part 1 of this tutorial I'm going to take a look at the establishing shot of the band and the light bulb shot. These both required floating dust-like particles to drift through the air, while being drawn towards the electrical lights. So I've dragged a new particle simulator onto the timeline. I'm going to switch the viewer to the perspective view while working on this effect so that I can move around in 3D space without affecting the actual scene camera. I'll now go into the emitters emitter shape properties group and switch it to the cube shape. Incidentally if you're new to the particle simulator I recommend checking out Axel's tutorial called Anatomy of a Particle Simulator I hope you understand how everything slots together. Okay by clicking on the shape group you can see the shape itself on the viewer. For these particular shots, I actually elongated the shape out by increasing its width. Using a cube shape means that all the particles will be created inside the shape. If I move the playhead around, you can see the particles appearing at random positions inside the cube. Next up, let's assign a texture to these particles. To do this, I'll go into the Particle System Appearance group and change the texture source to Built In. For the actual texture, I'll go for the Spark Star texture. This is a really great texture for any kind of particulate matter, such as dust. In the movement group, I'll reduce the scale, as we don't want to be seeing the actual texture shape. These dust particles need to be barely visible to the viewer. The particles are disappearing a bit too quickly, so I'll boost the lifetime up to about 10 seconds. Currently the particles are all flying out in random directions at a constant speed. I want them to cluster together more and have a bit more randomness to their movement. So I'll make a couple of changes to their speed to make this happen. First, I'll reduce the movement speed to 100, cutting it in half and slowing them all down a bit. Then, in the movement variation group, I'll change the speed variation to 100. This effectively means that any single particle can range in speed between 0 and 200. The result is that some particles cluster around the emitter cube, while others fly off quickly into the distance. It's starting to look a bit more like the movement of dust. Next, I'm going to jump into the Lifetime panel. While the particle properties in the Controls panel determine the appearance and behaviour of a particle at its birth, the Lifetime panel adjusts how each particle behaves over its lifetime. I'm going to scroll down to the Speed property and change the graph here. First, I'll drag the default point over to the far left. This marks the birth of the particle, so we'll make sure the speed is at 100% at this point. This means it will use 100% of whatever the value is in the controls panel. I'll then click on the graph to add a new point. This I'll move to 20% along the particle's lifetime. It's often easier to just type in the number rather than trying to drag it to the exact position. And then reduce the speed down to 10%. Given that our particles last for 10 seconds, this means that 2 seconds after a particle's birth, it will decelerate to 10% of its original speed. I'll also right click on the point and change it to a smooth curve so that the speed change is nice and subtle rather than abrupt. Alright, we now have three speed properties working in conjunction with each other. The movement is set to 100, then the movement variation is set to 100 as well, meaning we have a speed range between 0 and 200. Then we have a lifetime control over all the particles, reducing them to 10% of their original speed two seconds after their birth. By combining these different properties, it results in a huge range of behaviour within those defined boundaries. Talking of variation, let's add a bit more to both the life and scale properties. This again helps to prevent the particles all doing the same thing and looking the same. The particles are still moving in straight lines though. We want our dust to drift about a little, as if caught on different air currents. This is where we can move into using forces, which are physics-based influences. I'll add a new force by clicking the plus icon next to the force group. The default force settings apply a direction based force, which is a bit like having gravity in the scene. So as you can see all our particles are now being pulled down and out of the shot. I'm going to change this to a turbulence force, which introduces random movement through changes of acceleration on the x, y and z axes. Because the acceleration is affected on those three axes separately, it results in the particle wiggling about in 3D space. As you can see, the default turbulence settings cause the particle movement to become much less predictable. 
We don't want it quite this wild though, so I'll go into the force properties and reduce the strength down to 2%. This still introduces the random movement, but without sending the particles off on crazy adventures in time and space. Forces get particularly powerful when you start to combine them, so I'll now add another force. This one I'll leave as a directional force because I want it to be kind of like gravity, acting as a gentle pull down on the dust. Currently it isn't so gentle though, so let's go again into the properties and reduce the strength down to 2%. Rather than having the directional force point straight down, I'm going to alter its orientation, shifting the Z angle to minus 50 degrees. This pulls the particles down and to the right slightly, which looks kind of more natural. You can of course use this force to pull your particles in any direction you want. Don't think of the direction force as only being useful for gravity, it's just as useful for making particles float up into the air. As you may have noticed, the two forces I've added are both global forces. This means they affect the entire 3D scene. No matter where the particles are in 3D space, they will be affected by the turbulence and directional forces. Forces can also be more localised. Let's add another one, and this time I'm going to change the shape from global to cuboid. The shape controls are much the same as the emitter shapes, so you can adjust it to whatever size you want. Using the default settings, you can see how any particles entering the cube are dragged straight down by its more powerful directional force. Particles outside of the cube are unaffected. If I change the direction of the cube force so that it's pointing more upwards, you can see that the particles are initially pushed up, but once they leave the influence of the cube, they are then affected by the global direction force and are pulled back down and to the right. As you can imagine, you can build up some really complex and interesting behaviours just by combining different forces. Turbulence and direction are not the only forces, of course. For the light bulb shot, I also used an attraction force. This pulls the particles towards the centre of the force. So, if I switch this cube to attraction, you can now see that any particle that enters the cube area is pulled towards its centre, with several becoming trapped inside the shape. If I increase the size of the cube, more particles will be caught by the attraction force. The closer to the centre of the cube, the stronger the forces affect. This is of course all happening in full 3D. So, I'm going to reduce the cube size back down, and then ramp the strength all the way up. I can then move the cube shape to wherever I want it to be. If I switch over to the final composite shot, you can see that the attraction force was positioned over the light bulb, creating the impression of the particles being drawn in towards the light. With the behaviour now locked in how I want it, I'll make some final tweaks to the particle appearance. Of course you don't have to do this in this order, you can tweak your particles however you want, whenever you want, but this just made for a nice workflow when I was working on this particular effect. So I want the particles to have similar colours to the background footage. The easiest way to do this is to use the pipette icon. So, in appearance, I'll use the pipette and then select a representative colour from the viewer. This is done simply by holding down the mouse button on the pipette and then dragging over whatever colour you want and then letting go. Except, now all the particles are the same colour. There's a colour variation setting, but that introduces far too much variation, introducing all sorts of colours and making everything very multicoloured. Potentially a cool look if that's what you're going for, but not suitable in this case. I'm just going to undo both of those changes, and then use a different technique entirely. For this, I'm going to go back into the lifetime panel. Under the colour property, there are several options. When set to off, the particles just use the colour from the controls panel, as we were just looking at. If you change it to a gradient, you can have the particles gradually change colour over the course of their lifetime. What I'm going to do is pick the third option, random. I'm then going to add some tabs to this colour gradient, and again use the pipette here to select a bunch of different colours from the viewer. I want to pick some colours that are kind of representative of the overall scene. A random colour from this gradient is then applied to each new particle, ensuring that the effect has a wide range of colour. You can see we now have a mixture of light and dark particles. The last step is to change the particle blend mode back in the appearance group to add. This makes the particles bright and glowy, creating the slightly magical feel that we're going for. And that pretty much is how the light bulb shot was put together. The establishing shot of the band used essentially the same setup with the particle simulator duplicated for each light. The forces were then set to point in opposite directions, so that the particles all drifted towards the singer in the centre of the frame. I then added some 3D lights with a heavy fall-off curve, so that only the particles close to the actual lights in the shot were visible. This resulted in the particles gradually disappearing as they drifted away from the light sources.
Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully this will help more of you get to grips with particles and forces, both of which are hugely powerful features in HitFilm 2 Ultimate. In part two of this tutorial series, I'll be taking a look at the more dynamic shots from the musical sequence in which particles interact with the movement of the instruments.